Breaking news from the 7 Action News investigators. Michigan Supreme Court Justice Diane Hathaway now facing federal charges. And that's where we begin tonight. Good evening to you. I'm Glenda Lewis. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. She's accused of lying to her bank and getting a sweet deal she didn't deserve. 7 Action News investigator Ross Jones just got back to the newsroom. He joins us live now. And Ross, this is huge. And unprecedented. Glenda, good evening. Justice Diane Hathaway's last day at the Supreme Court is Monday. But with this new charge, the feds are showing they're not finished with her yet. A sitting state Supreme Court justice has been charged with bank fraud, a direct result of a seven action news investigation. How Justice Diane Hathaway allegedly hid assets to get a short sale on this house could land her in one like this. Certainly it's a major event when a sitting justice on a state Supreme Court is accused of a major federal offense. Late Friday, Hathaway was hit with criminal charge 1344, bank fraud. She waived her right to an indictment, which legal experts say is a sign she's ready to make a plea. The feds say she lied to her bank, crying poor while she was hiding assets that we first exposed. Hathaway's bank, ING, forgave almost $600,000 in mortgage debt from her underwater home. Around the same time, others in Michigan were struggling to get short sales approved. It was mortifying. I mean, I were, I'm 60 years old, I worked 28 years, worked all my life, and basically I felt like a bum. Hathaway dodged our questions when we first exposed her property she shuffle last these. May. These are important questions, Your Honor. But she had a harder time dodging the FBI. We confirmed their investigation in October, and within weeks, the U.S. attorney filed forfeiture proceedings to claim Hathaway's waterfront Florida home, valued at almost three quarters of a million dollars. That's one of the properties shuffled out of Hathaway and her husband's name when they were crying poor to the bank. But only Justice Hathaway is charged with bank fraud. That indicates that she took the lead uh, in this transaction. That, and of course she does have a background in real estate and even a real estate broker's license. In January, on the same day the Judicial Tenure Commission moved to suspend Hathaway from the bench, she announced she'd give up her gavel. Today's news of a criminal charge is just the latest in a series of blows to Hathaway, who was elected in part thanks to campaign ads like this. She learned the values of toughness, hard work, integrity. If Hathaway were to plead guilty, prison time is very possible, says former federal Federal Prosecutor Peter Henning, now a professor at Wayne State, the recommended sentence is 27 to 33 months behind bars. Judges are careful about uh, going below the recommended guideline sentence, but given her background and her long record of service, um, it's certainly a possibility that uh, the judge could go and give her a much lighter sentence. Justice Hathaway threw away her career for $600,000. Why would anyone rationally make that decision? Now, calls to Hathaway's cell phone and home were not returned tonight, nor was a call to her lawyer, Steve Fishman. Her last day as a justice is Monday, as we said earlier, but we've learned that her office in Lansing is already empty. All right, Ross, thank you very much. Now, what are we hearing from the state Supreme Court, if anything, at this hour? Well, Chief Justice Robert Young issued a statement earlier calling the last eight months an unhappy and uncharacteristic chapter in the life of the Supreme Court. He said he's hopeful that he and the other five justices on the court can move on starting Monday. All right, Ross, thank you very much. Ross Jones reporting from the newsroom tonight. Well, joining us now in studio is 7 Action News reporter Julie Bonovich. She's here to walk us through this case. Julie, you've been at this timeline all day. Yeah, that's right. We're looking at this very specifically from when it began. And to tell you, it didn't take long for Justice Hathaway to fall from one of Michigan's most trusted offices. It began May 9th, 2012. Seven Action News investigator Ross Jones breaks the story that Justice Diane Hathaway may have played a shell game with some of the homes while she was crying poor to her bank, asking them for a short sale that would save her hundreds of thousands of dollars on this Lake St. Clair home that was underwater. May 10th, Supreme Court Chief Justice Robert Young urges Hathaway to clear the air and explain her real estate transactions. Then on May 23rd, the 7 Action News investigation prompted a citizen to request an investigation by the State Judicial Tenure Commission. October 29th, 7 Action News confirms the FBI is actively investigating Justice Hathaway. Then on November 20th, the U.S. attorney goes after Hathaway's Florida home, filing a civil complaint and accusing her of fraud and money laundering. On November 28th, Justice Hathaway returns to the bench for the first time since she was hit with a complaint, 
but she says nothing. Then, on November 30th, Justice Hathaway denies any wrongdoing. December 19th, the feds temporarily stopped the seizure of Hathaway's Florida home, a sign that the two sides might be working out a settlement. And then came January 7th, 2013. The Judicial Tenure Commission calls for Hathaway's suspension. Hours later, Hathaway announces she will retire at the end of the month. So we've been making phone calls all afternoon to people who have spent time on the Supreme Court bench for their reactions. And just about 20 minutes ago, we heard back from a former justice, and he's going to talk with me as soon as I get off the set tonight. So we'll hear his side tonight at 11. Reporting live, Julie Bonovich, 7 Action News. Julie, thank you, and stick with the station that broke the story. In just a few moments, 7 Action News legal analyst Tom Cranmer will join us in the studio to further break down today's developments.